Looking at the Raspberry Pi Zero W again, I haven't yet used the Bluetooth built in on the Zero W, and I quite like to. It's um, so this is one of the benefits that you get with this. You've not just got the Wi-Fi integrated on the board, but you've also got Bluetooth. And so I want to connect a Bluetooth peripheral to it. And what I came up with is this thing here. So this is a Bluetooth GPS that I've had for uh, absolutely years and um, hasn't had much use recently. But this is quite nice because um, it runs, it's rechargeable, it runs off its own internal battery. So what we should be able to do is connect this to this. And then what I'd like to do is extract some of the information from the messages coming from the GPS and capture them in a Python program. So what I might do is extract the time, so because obviously the GPS has a very accurate time signal built in. What I might do is intercept the time that's been sent from the satellite and display that using a Python program. Now GPS units all use a, a standard command set, a message set, uh, which is normally referred to as NMEA, so National Marine Electronics Association. And I'll show you some of the types of messages that come out. There's, there's four different types, I think, of messages that come out of this particular unit. And they give various bits of information not just the the location of the of the units so that you can work out where you are with latitude and longitude but also you get the the time you get very accurate time reading and you also get information about the satellites how many satellites this unit can see and um uh well we'll we'll see okay so we'll um we'll try and break out some of that information in the python program on the Raspberry Pi Zero W now. Um, so this is quite a recent version of the operating system. So I'm using uh, Raspbian. So this is Raspbian Jesse 8, uh, which I just downloaded the other day. So it's, it's right up to date. And this version seems to have all the necessary Bluetooth stuff already built in and running. So there's there's not very much that you need to do in order to, to get this going. So I've got my my Bluetooth GPS switched on and I'll just check uh, well let's let's first run system CTL status Bluetooth. And this will tell us whether the service is running. So there we go. So we've got a Bluetooth service active and running. And by the way, if you do PSAX, you should also be able to see your um, Bluetooth daemon running. So there, there we go. So the uh, process ID 526, which is the same as the one that we see up here. Um, you can see the Bluetooth daemon running in your PS listing. So that's that's a good indication that Bluetooth will now work. So uh, I'll just run the HCI tool, which is allows me to do various things, including scanning for Bluetooth devices. So I should be able to see the GPS come up in the listing here and any other Bluetooth thing that's within range. Okay, so now we've we've got the so this is the the name of the GPS and this is the MAC address which we'll need in a moment when we do the pairing with it. So now I'll go into Bluetooth control, Bluetooth control, and I need to select agent. I want this to be in control of the Bluetooth uh, GPS. Uh, the, that 
um, parameter there, no input, no output, allows allows the Bluetooth controller to uh, prompt me for a pin number when the device asks for a pin, because otherwise the pairing will fail. So we'll put that in. And now we'll say default agent. And I should be able to pair with my device. So I'll get the MAC address from up here, paste it in. Ah, oh, not available. Okay. Perhaps I can do scan. Scan on. Okay, so we can see in the scan there. Let's just try again. Whoops, too many times. Attempting to pair. Oh, here we go, pin code. So the pin code for this GPS is always four zeros. Pairing successful. So now we've got the Raspberry Pi paired with the GPS. So if we list paired devices, there we can see our global SAT Bluetooth connected. So that's good. So, so far that has worked. We can exit out of the Bluetooth controller. So the next thing that we need to do is to connect it to a COM port so we can actually see the text messages coming out of the GPS. So this is a separate operation and we do that with the RF COM command, RF COM bind. We give the device name RF COM1 and again we'll use the MAC address. Oh, am I? Oh, I need to be super user to do this. So, okay, try again. RFCOM bind dev RFCOM one. So dev rfcom1 will be the name of the serial device when this succeeds. There we go. So that seems to have worked. So if I do rfcom on its own now, it'll, it'll list the bindings. So it says uh, that's on channel one. So I, I would need that channel one if I wanted to release that, um, that com device again uh, later on. So I now should be able to see traffic coming out of the GPS. So what I can do is if I run screen, which is just a simple um, uh, which is just a simple uh, TTY uh, terminal program that you can use to look at stuff coming out of a particular serial port, or you can use it uh, for uh, running several sessions out of a single terminal. It's quite a useful program. So if I if I run screen and I put in the dev rfcom1 Oh, the mouse has gone off so I'll switch it back on again. See it's because I didn't do it quick enough and there was nobody listening to the to the GPS. So we go again And there we are. So we can see all of these different. So we can see all of these different sequences streaming out of the GPS, and th and this is called uh, the NMEA command set. Or uh, NMEA means National Maritime Electronics Association.
So we've proved that we're connected. We've got a Bluetooth pairing between these two and that we can stream the uh, NMEA sequences out of the GPS. So now we need a program in here to actually interpret those messages. And um, several of the messages have a time code in, but I'm just going to pick one particular one uh, in order to uh, f focus on the problem that I want to solve today, which is just to get the time out of the, the GPS. There are actually four different types of NMEA command that come out of this particular type of GPS, and, and these are examples of them here. So you can see that each one of these uh, messages starts with $GP, uh, and then the, the next three letters is, is a unique code for the, the message. The one I'm going to be interested in today is, is this one here, the GPGGA, or just GGA. And what this one does is it, it provides basic uh, 3D fix information from, from a GPS. So you can see in, in this example, we've got the um, latitude and longitude. So there's 48 degrees and some more north and uh, one degree east. So, so you've got the the GPS, the GPS coordinates in latitude and longitude there, and the I think this one here, the the forty six point nine, is the height above sea level. So, so GGA um, is the one I'm going to use, and this field here, this first field, is the one that I'm really interested in because it gives me the the time in hours, minutes and seconds. I'm going to use this Python program that I've written here. So let me describe how it works in more detail in a moment, but I'll just show you how this works at the moment. So we'll do Python simple GPS and it'll sit there listening for messages from the GPS. And there, as you see, we're getting one message every every second. So these GGA messages come out once per second. And I'm extracting the time out of that GGA message and printing it to the screen. So this gives a quite a nice way of getting a very precise time out of the GPS satellite network and into the Raspberry Pi. And to look in this program in more detail, um, I'll actually post this on GitHub so that you can play with it yourself and, and change it and see how it works. But for now, let me just briefly describe how this works. So first of all, of course, I'm opening the serial port. So the, as you'll remember, the serial port was called slash dev slash rfcom1. So I'm opening the serial port. And then we have one of my favorite while true loops. So while true means it's going to loop through all of this in, uh, all of these instructions here forever until I hit control C on the terminal. So within that loop, I'm going to read a character. I'm looking for slash R, which is actually the carriage return at the end of the line. And if I get one, then I'm sending a full line of text into the function up here called NMEA, which I will show you in a second. And then I clear the line and we start looking for characters again. So this is just a way to gather a full line of text uh, at a time because the, the serial port is only delivering me one one character at a time. So if we look at NMEA, so in NMEA I'm sp splitting the line up based on commas. So if you notice, the fields of the NMEA messages are all comma separated. So I'm separating out all of the fields. And um, if field, if the first field, so part zero, matches the GPGGA, 
then I call this other function GGA. So obviously I could extend this, I could add more different types of NMEA command and have a, a, a parsing function for each. But in this case I'm only looking at GGA. So when I get a GGA I'm now matching on this time on parts one which is that that second field if you remember was the time so it's it's got six digits of time and I'm using the uh, regex function here re to um, gather together the digits so that I end up with hours minutes and seconds as three different numbers so this is all part of the uh, this here is all part of the regex API and then in the end here I'm just printing out a message so so you see the percent s's here represent hours minutes and seconds and you see the parameters that I'm passing in in this little tuple here are hours minutes and seconds so that's quite quite simply how it works it's just reading the serial port and pulling out the information that interests me. I hope you found this walkthrough interesting. Please subscribe for more videos and I'd love to hear your comments on this topic.